Hi, I'm Natalie Bouchard, and you're listening to Inside NC Labor, a podcast designed to inform and educate North Carolina citizens on the role that the Department of Labor plays in state government. Hello, and welcome to our fourth episode of Inside NC Labor. I'm Natalie Bouchard. Hey, everybody. This is Mary Catherine Rebels. Hey, this is Dolores Questenberry, and our special guest today is... Tommy Petty with the Elevated Amusement Division. Thanks for being here. How are you? Good, you? I'm doing great. Well, we are so excited to have you, and I just wanted to start off and ask you a little bit about the Elevator and Amusement Device Bureau. I've been with the Department of Labor Elevated Division for a little over 20 years now, and prior to that I was with the Elevator Company in Danville, Virginia for 15 years. And I've seen most of North Carolina and when I was with the elevator company, Virginia, Tennessee, and West Virginia. So I've traveled through the country and seen a lot of elevators and a lot of amusement rides with the state of North Carolina. And we also do ski lifts in the mountains, which a lot of people don't realize that they even get inspected. A lot of people don't realize amusement rides or elevators get inspected except for the commissioner's picture hanging in the elevator that everybody gets to see. Mm-hmm. We inspect approximately 22, 23,000 elevators a year and all approximately 7,000 amusement devices and about 50 tramway devices. When you talk about the Elevator and Amusement Device Bureau, I know you elaborated that on that a little bit, but North Carolina does things a little differently than other states, you could say. Yes, in the uh, as far as elevators go, we we go strictly by the B, uh, A17.1 code book, and there is basically some standards for amusements, but there's not actually a cut and dry code book. So we have to go by the administrative act that we have in the state of North Carolina, which is really good. But in the state of North Carolina, we inspect every ride every time it's set up. And I've actually inspected the same ride twice in the same day because it was at one school in the morning and one in the afternoon. We go through the entire ride. Pretty much if you get on it and ride it and and have fun, we do it. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good way to put it. Yeah, that's good. It makes us feel safe. Thank you. All right, so you mentioned the the state inspects uh, amusement devices. Um, What could you walk us through very generally the process for inspecting amusement devices? Well, we'll start at the beginning. Uh, Each company, before we go inspect, they have to send in a location notice to our office 10 days, 10 working days prior to the inspection date at a minimum. They also have to send a certificate of insurance to us, and if there's any NDT, which is non-destructive testing required, they have to send that paperwork in too. And once the date comes for the inspection, the inspection team will show up depending on how many rides as to how many inspectors will be there. And each person or each two people are assigned to each ride. And they start at the beginning looking at the fence, checking the interior, checking the electrical, checking the mechanical parts, checking every nut and bolt, R key, screw, whatever's holding that ride together, check for sharp edges, anything that could injure somebody, seat belts, Uh, height requirement signs, training records for the operator, maintenance records for the ride. We go through everything you can think of for that ride before we put a sticker on it and let it run. So Tommy, is there typically a timeline of how long that takes generally or is it just dependent on the ride? Well, some rides take longer than others, but as a general rule, our theory is that it takes as long as it takes. Well, I want to transition a little bit. I know Fair season is a crazy time of year. And at the North Carolina State Fair, we have the State Fair Flyer, which is essentially a ski lift that goes across the midway. And you all mentioned you inspect the ski lifts in the mountains as well. So how kind of do those two compare? There is a code book for uh, ski lifts or tramway devices. Mm -hmm. And you have a couple of different height requirements as far as a seat off the ground and and you have to latch the lap bar on a uh, lift that's used like at a fair, whereas compared to a ski lift at this time, there's no requirement to lock the lap bar because people are supposed to be experienced skiers that's riding it so they can raise the lap bar up when they get to the top and go out. But a lot of times at your fairs, 
you'll get families or little children, senior citizens, that some of them may have never rode a chairlift before. So they have, some of them has to, you have to slow the lift down and sometimes you have to stop the lift to help them off. Other than that, the mechanics, the testing procedure and everything is pretty much the same for both ski lifts and fares. So speaking of the ski lifts, Mary Catherine and I a couple months ago ventured up to Beach Mountain to see how the inspection process was going. Just wondering, are there any updates on that and how was that whole experience? The uh, When y'all, both of y'all was there, we was doing a new inspection on one of the two new lifts that Beach Mountain put in this year. They took two old lifts out and put in two new ones and uh, everything as far as the testing procedure went good. They had some minor things that they had to correct and, and get done before we could pass off on them. And then we had one lift that we it took us to almost Christmas before we got it passed, but that was because they put a new drive system in and they was having issues with getting it working with the existing equipment. But after that, everything's been open and everybody should be doing good at the mountains. The only problem I had is when they had all the snow up there, the people had problems getting there and the vendors bringing the food and everything had problems getting there. Mm-hmm. But they was able to make it work, so. So, Tommy, I think there was something interesting about the Beach Mountain ski lift in particular. So, do you want to elaborate about that? On the uh, number five lift, which re- replaced a uh, detachable lift, which is unusual, but it was one of the older versions that takes a lot of maintenance. So, but they put in a the new lift there, and you and they're using a conveyor loading system, where you get step on a conveyor belt, and it's timed with the drive of, of the lift and the chair comes around and the conveyor belt moves at the same speed the chair is moving so you get or moved up and the chair comes behind you and basically just scoops you up and you take on up off up the mountain right which for our listeners is a is a fairly common thing out west oh Um, yes major ski areas use them all the time right but here first one in the state of north carolina wow that's amazing. That's really impressive. And we got to go under it. That's we did. Cool. That's very <laughs> cool. Yes. yes. Y- y'all got to see the top and the bottom. So. Yes. <laughs> that was a fun experience. That definitely was. And a muddy day. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> to take us home, what's one memory you have from all your experience with the Elevator and Amusement Device Bureau that kind of sticks out in your mind? Well, I've had a lot of good experiences. I've met a lot of interesting people. And... But I was at Sugar Mountain one time, and the, the lift's been replaced, too, with a detachable, but this, the existing old yellow lift, they call it, because it was painted yellow. But it was an old drive system, and it moved real slow on it for us to inspect it. But when we left the bottom, it was decent weather, so I didn't carry anything real heavy with me. And by the time I got to the top, my mustache had froze. <laughs> so it was an experience that time. I learned a valuable lesson. Carry all your clothes you got with you. <laughs> That's our episode, and thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for tuning in, y'all. Remember, your safety is our priority. <laughs>